Welcome to this mini lower back practice. I've designed it as a little course, five days, a little bit every day, and then repeat, accessing different parts of the bodies in different ways, so that by the end of the week, we have a more kind of holistic approach to easing strain in the lower back. It's also designed for pure beginners, people who are not necessarily yogis, but would like to have release in this area. So I'm going to assume that you don't have yoga equipment, which means we have to just keep creating around the house. We need a strap and that can easily be a dressing gown strap or a belt or a piece of rope. We need a bolster, but that can just as easily be cushions from your sofa or from your bed piled up on top of each other until they have a nice kind of bolster thickness. And everybody has a blanket from around their house. Everybody has a chair with a flat seat. <laughs> so really simple ways to access safe and healthy openings. And in today's class, we're going to start on our back. So grabbing some cushions, grabbing a strap, and let's meet lying down on our backs. Our first pose is going to be Supta Parangushasan, leg openings. Often when we have lower back issues, our legs are really tight. So we want to open up the legs as the portal from our feet to come into our hips and our lower back area. So we're lying on the mat and our feet are parallel. And we want to make sure that the lower back is completely connected to the mat. So we have to tilt the pelvis a little bit to really connect the entire arch of the spine to the earth. And keeping that connected, lifting the right foot off the floor and placing your strap on the arch of the foot close to the inner heel and then straightening the legs and seeing what we have. Let the breath smoothly flow through you, easing the openings. Relax the face. If there's any pain, don't take that tension on in the face. And keep pushing the foot up against the strap. And with your hands, pulling the strap down against the foot. Try to open more and more the back of the knee. And seeing if you bring the leg a little bit closer, but keeping it straight. And looking at that leg, push the front thigh away from you, towards the thigh bone, and see how that helps to extend the back of the leg even more. Breathing. And two. And one. Releasing the foot back to the floor. Connect with the lower back, make sure it's pressing into the mat. And now lifting the left leg up. Strap on the arch of the foot and extend the leg and see how the left side is. We can be different in both legs because we use our bodies very differently from side to side. Keep trying to straighten the leg to find sharpness in the knee. To push that foot up dynamically against the strap and to pull with your hands on the strap down. Smooth and even breath cycles that soothe the system. Seeing if the leg can come closer, the back of the knee, opening more and more. And as we look at the leg, pushing the front thigh away from us, towards the thigh bone, over and over again. And two. And one. Coming back up and releasing. One more time on each side. Supta Karamushasana one. Placing the strap and straightening the leg, pushing immediately. Little flames coming out of the feet and reaching to the sky to keep extending that length through the leg. The hands equally firm, pulling down to increase that. Feel the femur bone coming into the hip socket. Draw it in rather than pushing it out. Try to suck that in as you open up the back of the knee. See if the leg can come closer and closer, going right to your edge. And three, keep the knee straight. And two, the front thigh pressing to the bone. And one, back up. And bending, changing sides. Last time, left side, Supta Parangushasana one. Charge the leg. Be vibrant, be dynamic. The muscles are gripping around the bones. 
little flames pushing up to the sky and the hands pulling down. And as we pull the hands down, we can go right to the head of the femur bone and feel it come into the hip socket and follow that action, becoming more sensitive to the vehicle that we're in. Seeing if we can draw the leg closer and closer, breathing through that, the front thigh ironing to the thigh bone and two, and one, and releasing and coming down. Dvipada Sutta lifting the feet off, interlocking the fingers, and gently trying to bring the knees towards us. But no big movements like this. We're not trying to lift the lower spine off the floor whilst we bring the knees towards us. We're trying to actually keep the sacrum connected and have the opening come from the front groins. So these front groins hold a lot of tension because they're linked to our thigh muscles, which get really strong and firm and, and kind of bulge out from the thigh bone. This flattening action and integrating the front femur bone into the hip sockets. Just exploring that with the breath. Seeing if you can soften there. How do you send the breath there? How do you soften there? And now the feet on the floor. Okay, another Supadarushasan, a little bit different. Lifting the right leg up and placing the right outer ankle on the front of the left thigh. And then place your hand on the inner groin right here. And with your hand, roll the inner groin to the outer groin as much as your hip will allow. And now bring the left foot off the mat. We're going to interlock our fingers behind the left knee. So reach up if you have to reach. If you have to lift the trunk, interlock the fingers. The elbow here can help the inner groin keep rolling back as you lie back down and bring that left bent leg towards you. The elbow pushing the inner thigh away from you. The inner groin rolling to the outer groin. Smooth and even breaths. Don't forget the feet, they're still alive, the toes are spreading. We're extending a web of intention everywhere. And now let's extend that left leg straight to the sky, like our first Supta but without a strap. Just see if you can extend, push up through the ball of the foot, See if you could bring the leg a little bit closer, but keep moving with your elbow, the right leg, the right thigh open away from you. And then bending the left knee and releasing back to the ground, finding our neutral position, making sure the lower back is connecting. Lifting the left leg up, placing the outer ankle right on the front of that thigh. With the left hand, roll the inner groin to the outer groin. Holding that in place, lift the right foot up, interlocking our fingers behind the knee. The left elbow can bend and help that action stay in place as we bring the right leg closer and closer. If you're feeling extreme resistance, use the exhalation as a tool that melts that resistance. So send the exhale to the place where you feel the most pain. A stream of healing exhalation, dissolving tension. Keep rolling the inner left groin to the outer left groin. Keep bringing that leg closer and closer. And now let's extend the right leg straight. See what we can get and push up through the ball of the foot. See if we could bring the leg a little bit closer. Breathing, feeling everywhere, the feet alive. And two. And one, bending the knee. And exhale, releasing the feet to the floor. Finding our neutral position, tilting the pelvis, 
Soft, smooth inhalation. Soft, smooth exhalation. Okay, now we're going to need some cushions. I'm going to use a bolster, but you're going to use cushions. And we're going to place the cushions, pile on top of each other to make a nice thick edge by the outer right hip. So on the right side of the body, like this. And they want to be particularly right here. So now we're coming to lateral Sukta Parabhushasana, making sure that the lower back is connected to the mat, lift the right foot off the floor, place the strap on the arch of the foot, and straighten. We're going to now hold the strap just with the right hand, so being as close to the foot as possible without allowing the knee to bend. So as much straightness as possible. If that means having the hand further down, then have the hand further down. Okay, inhaling and exhaling the leg to the right and the outer hip and the outer thigh should be supported by the blankets. Now you're keeping the leg firm, even though it's in the air, you're wrapping the muscles around the bone, in particular the outside edge of that right femur bone. Suck it up and suck the outer right hip in. So there's firmness and the stretchingness is coming from that firmness. Feel the pubic bone. And with the next exhale, try to broaden the pubic bone to the left and the right, in both directions, broadening. Keep pushing out through the ball of that right foot. And two, and one. Coming back up, you're gonna do it a second time. Inhale, and exhale, coming down to lateral Sukta Parabhushtasana. Feel the left foot firm, keeping you connected. Feel the right foot firm, pressing against the strap. Now feel the part of the thigh that's being supported by the bolster, the cushions, and suck that part of the thigh upwards. It's a hard area to reach. How do we do that? How do we get those cells awakened to make that action happen and to contain the opening from the right outer hip? Soft, smooth inhalations and exhalations. Feel the pubic bone broadening, the triangle broadening. And then bringing the leg back up. And we're going to do the same pose from a different entry point. So bending the knee now. And our elbow must come on the inside, just like it did in that last one that we did with the knee bent and the foot on the knee. Pushing the knee open, so the inner groin of that leg is rolling to the outer groin. This hand is pulling in. It's called a Barakonasana leg. And we're going to bend and extend. So right now we're in bend position. And now extend. And now bend. And now extend. And now bend. We have one more. And extend, push through the foot, activate, broaden the pubic bone, and then bending back in, and releasing. Okay, I'm turning so you can see the left hand side. Moving our bolsters, our cushions, whatever support we're using, to the outer left hip. The knees are bent, the feet are parallel. Don't let the toes be turned open. If anything, turn the toes in a little bit and the heels out. Benefit the lower back. And make sure the arch of the lower back is grounded to the earth. All right, lifting the left leg up, our strap on the arch of the foot. And now the left hand is going to hold the strap as close as possible to the foot without losing integrity in the knee. Push up through the strap. Inhale. And exhale to lateral Sutta Parangushasana. Keep pushing through the ball of the foot. Squeezing the outer left thigh in, the outer left hip in. And now come to the pubic bone. Visualize that triangular shape. And with the exhale, try to broaden the pubic bone to the right and the left, evenly and equally broadening the chest lifting. And three, and two, and one, bringing the leg back up. Restraighten the knee if it bent, push up through the foot. And exhaling, lateral Sutta Parabhushtasana. Feel your right foot, 
Feel your left foot. Grip the muscles around the left leg. Looking for that contraction, that sucking in action of the muscles from which the opening comes. Broadening the pubic bone. The chest also broadening, lifting. And then bringing the leg back up. Now bending our knee, finding that Bharatanasana leg where the elbow is going to push the inner knee open here. Actually, let's move that down so you can see better. There we go. From Bharatanasana, bend and extend. Here we go. Extending. And bending. Extending. And bending. Extending. Squeeze the outer thigh up, the outer hip in. Broaden the pubic bone. And bending in. And then releasing and feet to the floor. Okay, our last and final Sutta Parangrishasana coming up. It's called Parangrita Sutta Parangrishasana. And it's going to be the most intense for you if you have lower back stuff. So we're keeping the cushions and the bolster right where they are. This time we're straightening the legs and we want to make sure that our heels are pressing down and our kneecaps are facing up. So that means you have to slightly roll the thighs in to make sure the kneecaps are facing the sky. And now check in with your lower backs, making sure that as much as possible they're coming to the ground. Okay, we're lifting the right leg up, bending that right knee and placing the strap on the arch of the foot straightening the leg. The left hand now is going to hold the strap. We're going to bring that right leg across to the left so the inner thigh is going to rest on our bolsters, on our cushions. And this leg here is going to roll open as we do it to help us to get over. So here we go. Inhale. Exhale. Bring the leg across. Allow the back hip to come off the mat. Roll that left foot open. Push through the right foot. And now extend the right arm to the right. And turn and twist the abdomen and the trunk to the right, away from the leg. Soft, smooth inhalations and exhalations. The legs are firm. Little flames are coming out of the feet. We can feel the hip broadening, sending the exhalation there as needed. Turning and twisting, and two, and one. Bringing the leg back up and turning that left leg so the heel is pressing down again. And we're gonna do that one more time. Inhale, and exhale the leg over, and let the left foot come to the floor, the outer edge. See if your hands can get closer. Make sure the knees are straight. And now with an exhalation, roll and turn the abdomen, the gut, everything, the lungs, the head, the face, to the right, away from the foot. Long, soft, smooth inhalations and exhalations. Trying to feel longer, trying to feel broader everywhere. And then bringing the leg back up, the bottom foot rolls back in. And releasing. And feet to the floor, finding our neutral position. And now we're going to do the other side. So I'm going to turn so that you can see what's happening. So our cushions, our bolster are moving to the outer right hip now. We're straightening the legs, rolling the thighs in so the heels are down, the kneecaps facing the sky, and the lower back as close as possible to the mat. And now bend your left leg and place your strap on the arch of the foot, straighten, 
Right hand holds the strap as close as possible without bending the knee. Inhale. And exhale to Paridrita, Sutta Paradushkasan. The inner thigh supported by the cushions and then let that right foot roll open so the outer edge is on the floor. The back hip is lifted off the mat. Keep pushing through this foot, pulling back with the hand on the strap. And now exhaling the left arm to the side and turning and twisting. Keep relaxing the face, the jaw, the forehead. Bringing more and more out of the face and inside the body with the breath, clearing, opening, feeling. And now let's bring the leg back up. Restraighten the legs. Pull the bolsters, the cushions in so they're right there. And coming down for our second one. Inhale. And exhaling over. Trying to get the foot a little bit higher up towards the shoulder. The outside edge of the other foot, the right foot, is resting on the ground. Left arm extending. The belly button is turning to the left. The abdomen is turning to the left. All of the organs are turning to the left. But keep the legs firm. The front thigh is moving towards the femur bones and pushing out through the balls of the feet. Coming back to the breath as a smooth and even rhythm from which to explore. And two. And one. Bringing the leg back up. And exhale. And release. All right, I'm just moving this out of the way because we just want to come now to Dvi Parasutta Bhavanamukhasana, which we've done. Interlock the fingers. Make sure that your inner feet are lined up. Make sure that your inner knees are lined up. If they're not, what happens is you bring that unevenness down the femur bones and into the hips. So this is a really good position to realign the body from its unconscious distortions. And with the exhale, reconnect to this deepening of the front femur bone that we touched upon in the beginning of class. Learning to directionalize the exhale so it becomes a tool to help us Move through the outer layers into the deeper, more penetrating parts of the action. The lower back resting on the mat, the abdomen melting towards the lower back. And then letting the feet come to the ground and we can take our cushions now, if you have to get up to get your cushions or move them, make sure to roll over and push yourself up so you're not straining the abdomen or the lower back. And we want to have our cushions underneath our knees for our Shavasana. And when we lie back down, we're tilting the pelvis so that as we lie, the entire lower back is very easily resting to the ground and the entire abdominal area is melting towards the lower back. So when you have that right sensation, we're then going to extend our arms out to the side, rolling the front shoulders open. You can always have a blanket for the neck and head. And when everything is completely comfortable, closing the eyes and with an exhalation, just releasing into a few minutes of deep relaxation, Shavasana.
Loka Samastaha Sukinho Parantu Om Shanti 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 When you feel ready, gently allowing the eyelids to open. Rolling over to the right hand side. And then using the hands to push ourselves up. And welcome back. Your mini practice is complete. See you tomorrow for the next one. Take care.